Hey guys, in this video, we'll build a Flutter application that implements a turn-by-turn -turn navigation using the Mapbox navigation SDK. Uh, so in our last video, we built an application that actually connected a user to a particular restaurant. Uh, and uh, we had used the Maps SDK and the Directions API for that. Uh, and in the comment section of that video, I got a lot of requests from you guys that we should go ahead and build something that uses the turn-by-turn -turn navigation. Uh, I'm really happy to see that I'm able to help so many of you. So thank you again for watching that video. Uh, and in this video, instead of making a basic application that implements a turn-by-turn -turn navigation, I decided to go ahead and es escalate things a bit. And uh, we're going to build an application that gives a complete Uber-like experience. The user can now select a source, a destination, uh, and then start their ride uh, on, on their particular cab. And when they start their ride, they will actually uh, see the turn-by-turn -turn routing. Uh, so it has been a lot of efforts building this application and working on this video. Uh, I am really excited to see how things turn out. Uh, so let's get started. So this video will follow a very similar pattern to my previous video where we'll first of all understand the so-called theory behind the scenes and that is understand how things are working uh, and then we will go ahead and you know uh, start writing code and we have a startup code again uh, so that startup application implements some UI and we'll go ahead and finish it together. Uh, and I'm also attaching the link to the GitHub repository in the description. Uh, it is the same repository that was for the last time. Uh, and also, uh, if you haven't yet watched the previous video, uh, I will attach a link to it here. And I really recommend you to go ahead and watch it because much of what I'm going to say in this video will make more sense if you have watched the previous video and you understand how Mapbox works in the first place. So this is the GitHub repository corresponding to our project and what you should do is you should go into the folder of turn by turn uh, and inside here you will find two folders. One represents the completed code uh, and the other is the starter code. So click on the starter code and you will find a complete starter application here. So you should run this particular application and in order to run this particular application, you have to make a few changes. Uh, so for the viewers of my last video, uh, you guys know what we have to do, uh, but I'll just reiterate uh, for the benefit of others. So in your Mapbox account, you will see something like this in your account page, and then you need to create a token. So you are given with a public token by default, uh, but you have to create a secret token that will download the Mapbox SDK onto your system. Uh, so to create that secret token, make sure that the downloads read option is actually uh, selected and you can add any further restrictions if needed uh, and for the android uh, uh, devices you have to add the secret token in gradle properties and uh, add the public token in strings xml uh, and for the ios devices you have to do this in the info.property list file uh, so in order to make that simpler for you uh, what i have done is I've actually provided you with uh, keywords uh, in those places. Uh, so you just can open uh, your project in any ID, uh, let's say in Android Studio. And if you look for public key, you see uh, we have two files where we have public key. Uh, and uh, then you can go ahead and replace this with your public key, which will uh, look uh, something similar to pk dot uh, some uh, set of strings. And similarly, if you remove public key and write uh, secret key, uh, you see that you have your secret key uh, over here in your gradle.properties inside Android. Uh, if you are doing it for iOS, you have to make a separate file, uh, .netrc file, uh, which you can actually find the instructions in the readme as well. Uh, so once that is done, let's go ahead and have a look at the various SDKs and APIs that we'll be using. Uh, and let's see uh, how they work and how we should uh, use them in our project. So now we are looking at the Mapbox documentation, the official documentation in the Mapbox website. Uh, and here we'll be having a look at all the SDKs and APIs that we'll be using. So I'm again assuming that you guys have watched my previous video. So you understand how Maps SDK work and how the Directions API work. If you haven't, I highly recommend you to go ahead and watch it. Uh, so we won't be covering Maps SDK or Directions API in this video. Uh, but what we'll be doing is we'll have a look at the search APIs uh, which we'll be using. And we'll also have a look at the uh, Mapbox navigation uh, SDK uh, that will be using to implement the turn by turn navigation. Uh, so in the, in the first place, uh, if we go ahead and have a look at the uh, geocoding API, uh, which has the search APIs in it. Uh, so we have two things here, two endpoints, uh, Mapbox places and Mapbox places permanent. And Mapbox places is the endpoint that we are going to use because we don't want to store any of the results. Uh, now, 
one good thing would be to open the playground and go to the geocoding api playground so what happens is uh, we have a search uh, search text field here if i look for something like let's say apple park uh, which actually is the headquarters for apple uh, i see a lot of results here right uh, to be precise i see five results uh, so this is what we want to implement in our application that is the user should be searching for some keywords and we should be showing uh, him or her the most uh, re relevant results uh, now you can customize a lot of things here for example you can add uh, the types of places that you want uh, from among country region district locality so for our case i'll be going with the defaults that is placed postcode and address and you can also customize the language the country the limits that is how many items you want to return uh, and one good thing that you should do is to switch on this proximity parameter and provide a latitude longitude which should correspond to the user's current location now why am i saying this is because if the user is at a particular location let's say uh, we are in uber and i am trying to get book a cab to the railway station right uh, so in my case if i am in india i don't want to see a result of some railway station in australia so that's why i would use the proximity parameter to make sure that the results are filtered or sort of uh, sorted based on their relevance to me uh, so that is where this parameter will come into uh, use now there are also a lot of advanced features you can for example block some of the void section and uh, actually restrict the user to search in a particular section you can work on autocomplete routing or fuzzy matching uh, but for our case we'll just go with the basic options now uh, the request url looks something similar to this so you have the map box places endpoint which i was talking about uh, and you have your uh, search keyword here and then you have all the options that you have specified uh, now the more important thing is the response so the response has a query uh, which is of not much use to us but the features that we have so we have five features here 0, 0 to 4 and they are corresponding to the five results that we uh, see here so if we open one of those features we see that the first one that we have it has a text it has a place name uh, and it also has uh, a center so this is actually the coordinates of that particular place and the text is the name of that place the place name is the complete address so these are the things we'll be using in our application while we are building uh, our application of course we'll get more clarity once we go to the application and start working on these uh, but uh, that is roughly how this uh, search api is going to work uh, now coming to the navigation turn by turn navigation uh, if you go to the uh, navigation sdk for android you find this section turn by turn navigation and we see there are a lot of things here like route generation route progress uh, uh, updates routing and user interface so each of these is like a subsection where you have you know a complete set of instructions how you should go ahead and do it uh, in case you're coding with java or kotlin uh, but for our case since we're going with flutter uh, and thanks to Flutter community, uh, we'll be using the Flutter Mapbox navigation plugin that we can directly use in an application. And then we will be adding a few options of our own and we'll be customizing how it works uh, in order to suit our use case. Uh, so with, with this, we have the complete set of knowledge about how things work and uh, how we'll go ahead and build an application. Uh, so let's get right into uh, the application and start writing some code. All right. So we have cloned the repository and we can see that this is actually our starter code inside the turn by turn folder and uh, what we will do is let me run the application uh, and while the application is actually being installed inside the android emulator that i have open here uh, i will go ahead and explain to you the different files that we have uh, so the first thing is our main.dart which contains code to run our application and has a basic uh, my app uh, class which contains the rest of the application uh, and inside our helpers uh, folder we have the helper functions so do exceptions handle uh, actually the exceptions raised by the do package comments contain some of the commonly used uh, uh, functions helper functions and the mapbox handler handles all the uh, different uh, data and requests that we might uh, have from the application related to mapbox uh, actually i use it mostly to sort of extract or manipulate the api response and make it usable uh, for my application and finally we have the shared preferences uh, so the shared preferences uh, relate to all the get and setters that we have for the shared preferences uh, and uh, actually sort of manipulate data inside the shared preferences uh, 
so other than the helpers, we have the requests. So inside the request, I have three different files here. So Mapbox directions deal with the directions API. Uh, this is similar to what we have seen in the previous video. Uh, and then we have Mapbox search. So Mapbox search, I'm sure we saw this in great detail and you remember it. So we have the Mapbox places endpoint and Mapbox search uh, actually takes in a lot of uh, things like proximity, country and uh, search results limit and all that. Uh, and then we have the Mapbox reverse geocoding. Now this is something which I did not cover while talking about in the documentation. Uh, but reverse geocoding is self-explanatory. It is actually showing the place name and address when I am given the latitude longitude pair. So the query that we make the, the request is actually similar uh, to this only now we have a query that is a longitude comma latitude pair and that, that gives us the address of that particular uh, location. Now after that we have our screens. So inside screens we have four different screens. We have our home screen which actually has a, a representation of the user location and also has the option to move to the next screen uh, where we can act, uh, select the source that is the pickup point and the destination point for our cab ride. And then we have the review ride option uh, which comes after this and in the review ride I see the path of uh, con connecting my current location or the pickup point to the uh, uh, destination and I can also see what cabs are available and how much they cost and how long it will take me to reach my destination. And also I have my uh, turn by turn uh, screen here in which I'll be showing the turn by turn navigation. Uh, after that, we have our UI folder. Inside UI folder, we have our rate write, uh, which is actually used to uh, create sort of a rating system in the application. And then we have our good old splash screen, which uh, I'm sure you guessed. Uh, it does a lot of bunch of initializations. And then we have our widgets folder. So we have five widgets here. Uh, so the endpoints card store the pickup point and the uh, destination, which are included in the location field. And then we have the review write bottom sheet and the review FA button. So the review right bottom sheet is actually uh, a bottom sheet in the review right page, uh, which is a screen here. And uh, the review right uh, FA button is actually a uh, floating action button in the review right page. And finally, we have the search list view, which shows a list of all the search results corresponding to a search query. Uh, so that is all about the folders. Uh, so let's run our application, the starter application that we have and see how things look like. So now if we go ahead and run our application, so the first time it opens, it actually asks me for the permission to access the device location. I will uh, say while using the app and it shows me the splash screen. Uh, and after that, what I'll have is I have the very first screen, which is my home screen here. So if you go inside screens, we have the home screen. So what do we want in the screen is we want a map in the background uh, and this has a bottom model sheet. And here we can show the current address and uh, I, I also want to show the user location on the map. Now, if I click on where do you want to go today uh, and on button press, I come to this page where I am. I have to actually uh, text fields uh, that uh, where I can write the location into. And this button here should uh, fill this text field with the current user location. And this text field here will be actually your destination. Remember that we are representing the circle for the pickup point and uh, the square for the destination, which is sort of like a stop sign. Uh, and after it is done, we can click on review ride. And once we click on review ride, we get to the next page that is review ride. And here we have a bottom model sheet where we show the source address and the destination address. So these are uh, just hard coded strings that need to be changed into source and destination address. And then we have all the cars. So instead of going and doing, uh, you know, all the details, I just added one car and uh, there is this XYZ kilometer and the ABC uh, PM drop, uh, which will represent the time and distance. And then I have the uh, cost for that particular ride. So then I can click on start your premier ride. So this thing now assumes that my ride is completed and uh, I actually get the thing of rating my ride, which comes from, if you remember, the rate ride dot dart file here. And then finally I can do start another ride. Uh, so that is about the uh, starter application that you have. If you are successfully able to run it, this is what you should see. And we will work uh, in this video in four stages. We'll make all these four screens, we'll complete them. And then finally we will present the application. 
So let's start with the easiest screen that we have to work on. That is the home screen. So the home screen, what we want is we want a map in the background and a location here, right? So I'll start by declaring some variables. Uh, so the first variable I'll declare is actually a string and that will store my current address. So I'll just name it current address. And the second thing uh, is a camera position. Uh, if you remember from my last video, we needed camera position. Uh, to uh, actually render the map. So we'll call it initial camera position because it will show store my initial uh, location uh, that that is to be shown on the map. Uh, not location, but the initial position that is to be shown on the map. Uh, so now that both of them are declared, we have declared them as late. So we'll initialize them inside the init state function. I will say initial camera position is actually uh, camera position and in target what i'll do is i'll set it to current location and i'll allow a zoom of 14 here now zoom actually controls how much of the map i see and the current location is has been initialized to get current latitude longitude from shared preferences uh, which just does what it says that is it fetches the latitude and longitude from the shared preferences uh, and after that what we can do is i can set the current address and i can set it equal to get current address from shared preferences. So if you uh, notice in the splash screen, uh, we have actually set the latitude, longitude and the current address. So we do have functions back in, in the helpers that actually fetch these values and then we store it inside our uh, current address variable. Uh, so after that, we will have to add the map box map widget. So I'll write map box map and the initial camera position i can set it to initial camera position and then what i'll do is in the next line uh, i'll go ahead and add a few more parameters uh, that is we need to add the access token so access token is something that is your public uh, token which is provided by mapbox by default and in this case i call it as uh, mapbox uh, access token uh, now note that we are using the .env package in this so we'll have to import it and your configuration file inside the asset contain the .env uh, this time I have not put it in git ignore I have actually replaced it with a string uh, which you must have already replaced uh, if you have been able to run the starter application uh, and once uh, this is done I need to add just one more thing you see that we have to enable the user location so that is done using the my location enabled equal to true flag Okay, so now the map box is there. I can see this. Uh, the other thing is that I have the show current address here. So we have to show that current address and that is very easy. I just have to use the current address variable uh, which I had declared and I will remove the constant and actually put it here uh, because now this is no longer a constant. Okay, so with that, if I actually restart my application, uh, this shows in the splash screen and then it should show me the home screen. And in the home screen, I see the map and the current user location. So this map here uh, is completely interactive and I am currently at the Google headquarters because that is the default location uh, of uh, the Android emulator. And I also see the current address here. So let's go ahead and now work on this screen uh, uh, where we want to basically set the pickup point and the destination. All right. So uh, for this particular screen that we have here, this is sort of the toughest thing in the application that we will do, uh, but uh, it's not actually tough. It's just we have to implement a lot of things for the search thing to work. Uh, so we have four files in this concern, which already have some pre-written code, which is mostly some UI code that I have written because that is not something that I want to teach you or let you know. Uh, but what we will implement together is the logic and uh, you know the entire functionality that we want to show here. Uh, so the first file is prepare ride uh, and this is actually the uh, parent class of this particular screen. Uh, so we'll look at the files one after the other. So in here the first interesting thing is actually the static off function which will be used by the children to actually access the setters inside this particular class. So if you are familiar with Java or any object oriented programming, you must know what setters are. And in our case, we have setters which are actually uh, used to set variables in that particular class. 
uh, and in uh, in our case we have three search setters that is responsive state is loading state and is response for destination state and we have a few variables in here so uh, let's look at that so we have a is loading variable uh, which is actually used to uh, uh, you know it's a flag which tells if the response is currently being fetched or not and why we will use it is because if you remember the uber application so whenever you st start typing here and you stop so uh, when it actually tries to fetch results we have sort of a linear progress indicator down here i mean just exactly below the card you will understand when i actually show it to you but uh, that is what is loading will go ahead and govern and we have a is empty response which is used to check if the response is empty or not has responded to check if the response has been received or not and is response for destination to check if the response that we have received is for the source or if it is for the destination and then we have two strings here no request and no response and each of these actually uh, will be shown here in case we have uh, nothing to show on the screen that is in case we are not able to find any response or uh, if nothing has been entered by the user inside a text field uh, so after that we have a responses list and we have two controllers for each of these text fields so just a little heads up about the ui uh, we have the responses uh, we have the prepare ride uh, class here which is actually the parent class and inside this we have a endpoints card uh, widget which is actually this card on the screen you are seeing and inside this endpoint card we have uh, something called a location field so this location field is actually a cupertino uh, text field uh, with along with a lot of functionality that we will implement uh, but these location fields actually take care of these two things so uh, if it's actually a destination or if it's not a destination now why do we want this field because we want to may ensure that we show this uh, uh, button here this button will actually allow us to fill this text field with the current user location that is the pickup point is same as the current user location and uh, it should not be there for uh, the destination because why would one want to go where <laughs> where one is already in so and that makes no sense here that is why we have the is destination flag here and then we have the text editing controller for uh, to control whatever text we put in here and uh, that we are actually passing in as well and if we go to location field itself we see this is a pretty big file uh, i mean it's not a big file but uh, we have a lot to implement here uh, but here we have uh, the ui right now which is actually a cupertino text field and we are making use of the is destination i just talked about so we are also using for placeholder yeah so where to and where from and we are also using it to share the icon data that is whether we want it to be uh, my location that is this one or if it's going to be null uh, that is we are not going to show anything and we have a few functions here so you have a change handler function uh, that is to handle the changes on the text here we have a search handler function to uh, access the search api and we have a use current location button which is this button handler uh, and finally we have a search list view now this is something which is not yet written anywhere i mean we haven't uh, we don't have this mentioned anywhere in the starter code but this search list view will actually go ahead and render a list here, list of results here, which we will be using in the end. And what I want is when I click on one of those lists, I want to show the uh, corresponding uh, location here. So uh, that is all about these files. We can now go ahead and start coding. So what I will do is we will let's start from the, uh, you know, uh, from the miniature thing that is actually location field, uh, the smallest thing in this page. And then after location field, uh, we will go ahead and implement uh, the prepare right and then finish with the search list view. All right. So inside location field, uh, we first of all have a look at the on change handler. So the aim here is that whenever I type something here, let's say I type Apple here, I should basically send a request uh, to my uh, search API, uh, the Mapbox search API, but that request should not be sent as and when I'm typing because I don't want to send too many requests. I want to send maybe let's say one second after I have finished writing. So that is what we want to implement inside the on change handler. Uh, so the first thing we will do is actually to set the uh, loading or is loading to uh, true. Uh, so for that, uh, as I had already mentioned, uh, we will make use of the static off function and I will then call uh, is loading state 
and I will set it to true. And we also need to make sure that this is not null. So that check is needed and it's true not. Okay. All right. And here what we need to do is to implement that logic. So I'll just implement it and then I'll explain why, what, what I did and why I did. So I'll say, uh, so we have a timer for here, right? Already uh, and a nullable timer. And I will actually go ahead and check if uh, searched on typing is not equal to null. In that particular case, I'll make use of set state. And what I will do is inside set state, uh, I will go ahead and say search on typing dot cancel. And if it is uh, like irrespective of whether it is no, null or not, I will always go ahead and you know do one more thing, and that is actually saying uh, that search on typing uh, is equal to timer uh, and i'll pass in a constant duration here of one second so that is done by saying seconds one and a function that will be run after this uh, delay and that is actually the search handler function okay so now what happened here there is a lot that happened here uh, let's look at that so what happened here is we wrote uh, the first line to set the loading set to true so that whenever I have actually uh, doing some change here, I set the loading state to true uh, and uh, basically uh, then it triggers this uh, loader in the uh, parent. Uh, and then what we are doing is we have this search on typing uh, timer, right? So irrespective of whether it is null or not so initially it initially it's null actually uh, so if it's initially null i go ahead and set a timer uh, that actually triggers uh, after for one second uh, it tr triggers a search handler function uh, but since we are putting it inside set state the entire widget uh, resets itself and then it is no longer null so then i actually cancel the timer so whenever i stop typing it is at that instance that this thing runs and then what happens is I am actually uh, running these uh, or actually calling the search handler function. And the value here is the value at that uh, point of time. So this is a default thing inside the Cupertino text field that we have a on changed uh, parameter here. And it passes a value which contains whatever has been written in here. And then we will look at the search handler. So obviously it's pretty explanatory self-explanatory what we are going to do here uh, we are going to get the response <coughs> of the search api we are going to get the response of the search api and what i'm going to do is i'm going to call the get passed uh, for query and i'm going to pass the value here so get passed response for query is going to pass the response uh, of what a request we saw here inside the map box search and then it is uh, storing it inside the response in form of a list and then what we have to do is we have to set the responses and is destination in parent. So uh, the parent is called prepare ride and I can again use the off function like before. And this time I'll say, uh, okay, I'll also put the non nullable check and I'll say responses state uh, is equal to response. Uh, and then we have prepare ride dot off context. And uh, the next thing is, is uh, responses for destination state and I will set this to widget dot is destination. I'll just explain what I'm doing here shortly. Uh, but the first thing that we have is setting the responses uh, inside the parent. So in the parent that is the prepare ride, I have this setter here which is going to uh, set the responses uh, based on the uh, uh, data that comes from the children and it is also setting the has responded to true and is empty response uh, to actually the boolean flag uh, whether the response is empty or not and then we have a future delayed uh, that switches off the is loading uh, or actually switches off the loading uh, or the loader that we have here uh, but it does that after a delay of 500 milliseconds that is because i want to show the animation and sometimes the api call is just too fast that you even uh, will not be able to see the animation without uh, doing this so that is why we go went ahead and added the future dot delayed here uh, and the second thing that we have here is is responses for destination state now this is something which is important to me because since this is a 
uh, a child widget that we have inside and I want to uh, perform some particular set of actions based on whether it's a destination or not. Now, what is that? Um, that is this, that whenever I'm inside uh, this particular uh, search list view or I'm inside the uh, list that is rendered here, I want to make sure that the one that I'm selecting, whether I should set it to the source controller or whether I should set it to the destination controller. That's why I, I want to set the is response destination state uh, to widget dot is destination. Now, the last thing here is use current location button handler. So uh, we have mentioned very clearly what we're going to do, do here. We're going to store the encoded response uh, in shared preference. So first of all, we have to get the response for that. So I'll say var response. Uh, is equal to again this this is that tiny little thing here that we are trying to handle now this is the current location button handler function for corresponding to that and uh, it is already asynchronous so i'll use the await keyword and i'll say get past reverse geocoding this calls the reverse geocoding api and uh, it needs the current uh, latitude longitude so i just set it to current location uh, which we have already have a look at so this is the current location fetched from the shared preferences uh, after that, what I'll say is I'll say shared preferences dot uh, set string and this time uh, we will set the string to be source and the value here that actually can be json dot encode. So it's json this one dot encode and what we want the value to is actually response. Okay, I think it's not imported. Let's import it. Yeah, that fixes that. And then we have a string place here. So string place will go ahead and say a response of place. And finally, uh, we have a widget dot text editing controller dot text, which will be set to place. So what we did here is we actually uh, obtained the place uh, of the current location and we are setting it to the text editing controller. And remember all this is being done inside the condition of that, that the widget uh, actually is not destination or in other words on the condition that the widget is the pickup point or what I'm calling source. Uh, so th that is what we are doing here. And after that is done, uh, we are finished with the uh, location field uh, file and we will just go back uh, to our prepare right now. And what we will do is uh, inside prepare right, uh, we have uh, a few things to implement in, in the UI. So first of all, we will go ahead and uh, implement that linear progress indicator I have been talking about for so long now. So I'll say is loading uh, and I will put a check if it's actually true or not. And if it's true, I would return the linear progress indicator. And this time I'll also add a value color to it so that it matches with the theme. And I'll say always stopped, uh, always, I think it's called always stopped animation. Yeah, it's called always stopped animation. And then we have color and the color that we set is colors dot white. Okay, so that does it. And when it is not loading, I want to show a container here. I hope that's pretty clear. Uh, and the next thing that we want to do is we want to show an appropriate message if no address has been entered or if no results are found corresponding to an address. So that is where we uh, use our other variables. That is the is empty uh, response thing here. So the is empty response, what it will do is, uh, if it's true, we will set this to, uh, so we'll add a padding as well, uh, but we'll set this to a text um, that shows a message. So the padding may be, I'll just call it uh, 20 on the top. Uh, so I'll write only top 20. And then what you want to do is you want to add a child here uh, that has a center and then inside that you can add another child which is actually text and what text do I want to show? I want to show uh, one of the two possible texts that is uh, if a response has been received then if I am getting nothing that means that there was no response but if a response has not been received it means that no request was made so I would just write no request. Uh, I, I hope that was pretty clear what we did here and uh, what next we'll do is a container. So if if I don't want to show, uh, in other words, if the response is not empty, I will just return a container. Uh, and the last thing that we have uh, is implementing the search uh, list uh, view here. So search list view, it's the function here. 
and yeah so that is all done so if i go ahead and restart my application now uh, so it begins here again i will close this one uh, we can go ahead and click here and now uh, there are two things to demonstrate so if i write let's say google so you see this loading indicator here and that stops now and i get a list of all these things i mean that is really wonderful that we're able to uh, access the search api and the one we will be needing here is let's say this one so right now nothing happens when i click on it right so let's go ahead and implement that uh, very quickly so inside the search list uh, view uh, and we have the on tap function on the list style. So all of these are basically list styles and uh, for each of them we have an on tap function. And the on tap function, what we will do is we will first of all fetch the uh, place name. So I'll say uh, string text is equal to responses of index of uh, place or uh, not that of place. And we will add a condition that if uh, is response for destination, uh, so based on this one which is given to it as a parameter from the parent and if it is actually uh, the destination then what I'll do is uh, destination controller dot text I'll set it to text and also I will store it inside my uh, shared preferences because I want to use this in uh, other files so I'll set it as a string I will call this uh, destination uh, and I'll set the value to be uh, json dot encode uh, sorry encode and this one will be responses of index and this JSON we have to import so I'll import this here and the other case is actually the else part in which we will say uh, source controller dot text uh, equals text and shared preferences uh, dot set string and instead of destination this time we'll say source and the value will be uh, just the same. So I'll just copy it again here. So paste. Okay, so that is done. And the last thing that I will do uh, is something which you should not forget. So you have to close the keyboard once uh, you click on something, right? So for that, I'll say uh, focus manager dot primary uh, instance or primary focus. And here I will say unfocus. So that will close the keyboard once I click on or tap on one of these list views. Uh, again, I will restart my application uh, to let the new changes come in. And now if I click on uh, this one and if I say Google here, then it shows me all the results with Google. And if I click on this one, I see the uh, that this entire address comes up here. Also, this one works. So if I click on this. You see there is a new address google place uh, google plex uh, with which was our current address if you remember from here that's the current address here so it's actually able to fill the current address in here as well and uh, let's say for where to i will say apple park and that will lead me to apple headquarters and that fills in this as well so this page is complete now what we want to do is we want to click on review ride and we want to connect these two endpoints and we want to actually uh, also, uh, you know, get the values here for distance and for timing, the drop of timing. Uh, so let's go ahead and do that. In order to implement the review ride page, we have to first of all start working on the review ride fun uh, buttons and the bottom sheet. Uh, so what we'll do is in the floating action button, we will write a few lines of code. Uh, so the first thing that we have to do uh, is to get the directions API response and pass it to the uh, uh, modified response parameter. So I'll say latitude, longitude, uh, source latitude, longitude. And what I will do is I will set this to be equal to uh, get trip latitude longitude from share preferences. And I will pass the type of source. And then what we have to do is to uh, get obviously the uh, destination latitude longitude so i'll say destination lat long and i'll set it to get trip uh, from shared preferences again and this time but i'll give the type as destination okay uh, and the final thing is to get the modified response uh, so basically uh, what i call the modified response here uh, is uh, gonna be uh, set to await get directions from uh, api response so sorry get directions api response 
and we are going to pass the source and the destination uh, latitude longitude uh, so the modified response here sort of gives me uh, the result from this particular function and the get directions api just calls the direction api uh, and also you know like sort of uh, modifies it to the required uh, variables that we need or the parameters that we need and that is the timing the distance and of course the geometry uh, so if you have watched my last video all of what i'm saying right now will make more sense uh, and then what we have to do is to pass the modified response here and remove the constants uh, because it's no longer a constant uh, and in the bottom sheet what we do is we add two lines uh, that is uh, we first of all think about adding a source address and a destination address so for that and uh, since both of them will be string i'll say string source address and i'll set this to be equal to get uh, source and destination place text and this one uh, the type will be actually source and similarly for the destination address uh, i will say this is equal to uh, get source and destination again uh, so basically the same function uh, but the type this time will be destination okay so uh, in here uh, in the text now instead of the hard-coded string i will call source address and for this one i will call destination address so that will remove the hard code from here the last thing that we need is to modify the review dart so instead of writing the code here i will go ahead and straight away uh, paste the final code that is because everything that we have here is already covered in my previous video but i still quickly explain what we have done uh, so we have a bunch of variables uh, here related to mapbox and directions api uh, but the first thing we are doing is to initialize the directions response so we are setting off the distance, the drop off time and the geometry uh, from the responses that we're getting from the directions API. Uh, and then inside uh, on style loaded callback, uh, we are going to set the symbols uh, or the points. And those points uh, we are uh, actually getting from the uh, starting, that is the pickup point and the destination point. And the initial camera position is set to be the center of the geometry, that is uh, the center of the line between those points. Uh, and finally, I'm adding a polyline uh, between those two points uh, and uh, I'm also adding a source and a line there. Uh, if you remember in the last video, we actually had to delete it because there were multiple lines on the screen, but this time we have only one line. So we don't have to worry about anything. Uh, finally, let's restart our application and uh, run it so far. Uh, so I'm currently in Google Plex. Uh, I want to, let's say, go to Apple Park. So let's assume that is the de facto example for us now. And I'll choose the current location here and I will say Apple Park Way and I'll choose this one and I'll say Review Ride. So when I click Review Ride, I see this beautiful line that joins both of these points. So this is my current location represented by the circle and uh, this is my destination represented by the square. Uh, I get a premier cab here by default. I get the distance and the time. So the distance time that we actually had set here in the initialize function and we are going to later on use it inside the review bottom sheet. We are passing the distance and the drop off time. And this is just a hard coded string, the price. Of course, we, are, we don't have any prices in our application yet. Uh, and finally, we can click on start your premier right now. So this is uh, the point where we implement the turn by turn navigation. So if I click on start premier right now, I should actually see a turn by turn navigation instead of this rate your right uh, thing on the screen. Uh, so let's go ahead and do that now. So in the final stage of our application, we have to go ahead and implement the turn by turn navigation. Uh, although that was sort of the most important thing to do. So let's do that now. Uh, we in, in the starter code, you'll find a turn by turn dot dart file, uh, which is where we will implement that thing. Uh, and this file is totally empty as of now. Uh, but what we will do is we'll add the waypoints. Uh, so in, in terms of na map box navigation, waypoints are basically uh, some locations. Uh, so they have a particular latitude, a particular longitude. Uh, and they also have a name uh, for, for that particular point. Uh, and finally, uh, we will add a few variables here uh, on the top because Mapbox navigation needs a lot of configuration variables such as uh, the distance remaining, duration remaining, uh, directions, options and so on. Uh, and then we'll go ahead and actually finish this initialize function uh, and then uh, start the trip basically. So before we start writing code, I would like to add one function here. 
so it's not something i will explain straight away uh, i will talk about it soon uh, and you see there are a lot of variables which are not yet uh, you know entered so we'll go ahead and do that but this is a sort of a standard function on route event it actually is triggered on various events that can happen during uh, the turn by turn routing so even as we add these variables uh, i will talk about this in the end okay so we will begin by adding the waypoint uh, variables here so the, the first thing can actually be latitude longitude source so the source i will again do this like i have done many times before uh, i will call this get rip latitude longitude from three preferences and i'll pass in the source thing and then similarly for a destination i'll call the same function again and this time i will pass the type as destination okay and then we have a late variable here that is uh, of type waypoint and that i will call as uh, source waypoint and maybe let's go ahead and also add uh, uh, the destination waypoint here and then we have a uh, variable that i will call waypoints so this is actually a list of waypoints so i'll just specify it as uh, a list in this way okay so it's an empty list and i have initialized it all right now we'll need a bunch of configuration variables uh, so bear with me as i do a lot of typing uh, so we have map box uh, navigation so I, it's map box navigation and the first thing is actually directions so not all of it is late but some of it is late so we'll add them first of all so it's the directions the next late variable is actually map uh, map box options and this time let me call that as options and then we have another late variable uh, in fact two late variables and they will be of type double so this will actually measure the distance uh, not this distance remaining and again the second thing is uh, duration uh, remaining okay and then we have uh, the controller of course so this time it is map box navigation view controller uh, or this one and i will give it controller okay uh, so then we have some of the variables that we will initialize straight away so this is a boolean that is is multi-stop so if let's say you want to uh, uh, simulate a path in which there are multiple destinations uh, which is maybe something you can have in a shared uber or uber pool uh, so but in our case we will assume a simple case and we'll set this to false and there is another thing called a string uh, instruction and that instruction i'll set it to empty uh, and then we can add uh, a boolean of arrived so this arrived can go ahead and be set to false by default and similarly another boolean uh, of route build and that also we have to go ahead and set it to false and one final boolean that is uh, is navigating and is navigating and also set to false all right so all those uh, errors that we had here uh, vanished because they were all these configuration variables so let me talk about this on route event a little bit uh, so this is actually triggered uh, when we uh, set the directions uh, but what happens here is that every event that we have in here has a particular event type and uh, while we also have a look at the distance and the duration remaining uh, based on the event type we do some actions right so let's assume it's actually a progress change uh, event type then we uh, basically set that uh, i mean we actually set the data into progress event and then we try to change the instruction so instruction is another variable that we had set to empty string up here and similarly if it is actually route building or route built then we set this route build to true and if it failed then we set this to false and if it's a navigation running then we set is navigating to true on arrival uh, now here we put the arrive to true which is obvious and if it's not a multiple stop thing then we go ahead and actually finish navigation uh, and if it's a multiple stop thing then we just go ahead and you know wait till it's actually finally reached the final destination uh, and then if the navigation is finished or if it is cancelled now note this thing because this is what we will actually encounter and in that case we will uh, set both of these to false that is route build to false and is navigating to false 
okay and in the end we will keep on refreshing our ui which is uh, obvious so uh, that is done now inside of the initialize function which is the asynchronous function uh, we will add a few things first of all we have this not mounted return so if you look at the uh, explanation of this so this will just check if this uh, if the particular widget is actually uh, inside the widget tree or not uh, and the first thing we have to do here is to set up the directions and options so i have a directions variable defined already so i will set this to map box uh, navigation and what i will pass in here is an on route event and this one i will set it to the on route event so this is what we just talked about now this on route event is this function here and then we go ahead and set the options so uh, like we have in case of map box uh, we will have map box options here too and uh, what are the options here so the options here will be uh, we have a zoom parameter so let's say i'll set that to 18 and i have a voice instruction enabled i set that to true i have uh, a banner instruction enabled i also set that to true uh, this is something which i will show you even as we are navigating and the mode which I, what i can set it to is actually a mapbox navigation mode uh, this one and i will say driving your traffic so that will actually show me the real time traffic uh, in that particular location as well and the is optimized i can set to true again uh, because i want the most optimized route the units uh, i think uh, by default this is the imperial units but uh, since uh, it's uh, we can use the metric units basically uh, as well uh, it's slightly easier for me to understand and then simulate route is actually true and the language that we want uh, is english so i'll set it to en that is the language code for english okay and then we go ahead and configure the waypoints so we have a source waypoint up here if you remember uh, not this one so i will set to source waypoint and source waypoint i will call it uh, i will what i'll set it to is waypoint and the name i'll just put it source so i'll just call it source the latitude here will be source dot latitude and the longitude here will be source dot longitude all right and similarly we will go ahead and do our destination waypoint so i'll again copy this and below what i'll do is destination waypoint and in destination waypoint i will uh, go ahead and set it to uh, the same thing but with the changes that the name changes to destination and the source changes to destination in both places so i'll just call it destination as well okay now finally uh, i will go ahead and uh, add those waypoints to my uh, waypoints list so it's waypoints dot add and the value here will be source waypoint and also uh, i have to add the destination waypoint so i also will call uh, this one with the destination waypoint okay and the last last thing uh, we have to do in this project is to start the trip so uh, directions dot start navigation waypoints are already specified I think we are calling them uh, waypoints here. Okay, so let's put it waypoints here, and the options are options. Okay, so now let's go ahead and restart our application and hope that things work. Uh, and I really have my fingers crossed. So if I restart my application, I see this uh, the very first screen where I see my current location on the map. I also see the address here. And then we go ahead and choose Google Plex here. And let's say we choose uh, Apple Parkway here. And that is here. And I go and click on review ride. I see a review of my ride. I see the distance. Note that the time right now is 2.41 AM and I also get 2.59 AM, which means that it's uh, actually 16 or 17 minutes uh, of time that it will take me. So I get the new drop of time. That is something we are implementing inside the comments.dart uh, file here and we have the uh, distance here as well so I, so I can go ahead and start my trip now so if i click on start your premiere right now uh, that actually shows me this drive south then turn left in 80 meters turn right so we have turn sort right. of an animation then on the screen onto charleston road uh, and we have voice instructions enabled as well 
uh, and uh, that animation finally leads me here i switched off the voice instructions uh, so that i can talk uh, but uh, we have them I, i will just play them for you again uh, but the other things to note are uh, if i click here i see a complete set of text instructions uh, which actually come from uh, the parameter banner instructions enable true that we have set uh, and we also have a few more things that is we can provide feedback here Uh, to this particular plugin and we also have uh, this option that helps us see a complete uh, pathway and these black things that you are seeing on the map it's actually the issue with and with the emulator graphics but on a real phone uh, you can test it i have also tested it myself uh, we don't have any graphics issue uh, so that thing even this thing is not a black thing it's actually a uh, icon of this format which you temporarily saw uh so that's it uh i can enable the voice now uh and one more interesting thing is if i even go back uh go away from this application basically i keep this on and go away so i'll just Take do the this california 85 south ramp towards san jose cupertino so i see this under my notifications and it's constantly going to give me messages in 300 meters Keep left to take California 85 south. Yeah, exactly like that. So I can go back to my application now, and it's still there. Keep uh, left to take California 85. So the last thing to do is let's assume I finally reach my destination, right? So or uh, or I actually try to cancel my trip in between. So let's say I just click on this cross now, and even if I reach there, I can do that. Uh, and clicking on this cross will end the trip for me. and i get back to this page where i can rate my ride uh, of course i'm not storing it in a database in a, in a database now uh, but if i click on uh, rate my ride uh, i can do that and then i can start another ride and that again circles back to the very beginning uh, where we have our current location so that would be all that we have in this turn by turn application uh, uh, and uh, let's uh, now go ahead and uh, conclude this particular video All right. So that's how we have implemented the Mapbox turn by turn navigation. We also explored the search API, the reverse geocoding API, the directions API, uh, the Maps SDK. Literally everything that is there in basic Mapbox, other than the Vision and Atlas, and you know all the advanced features. Uh, so I hope uh, it has been really fun uh, and enjoying to learn. Uh, and uh, meanwhile, if you have any issues, uh, so if you do not understand something that I am explaining, or if there is some issue running the starter code, uh, you can always go come and reach out to me. I think the best way to do that is to put a comment in the YouTube comment section, or you can also go to the GitHub discussions. So on the repository, you have issues and discussions where you can put your query, and I will be more than happy to help. And also other people who are you know actually looking at your query will be able to help you out as well. Uh, so. Uh, then in the next video i was wondering if we should go ahead and uh, have uh, a more informative kind of video because we had a two tutorials back to back uh, i was hoping we could have a look at uh, the neo 4j cloud uh, uh, graph database or maybe we could have a look at uh, react native and expo uh, so something uh, new which is hot in the market right now so uh, you tell me what you want to uh, you know learn and uh, more about it in the comment section uh meanwhile thank you for watching the video make sure to like share and subscribe uh and i will see you in the next one